we're going to go ahead with our first question, which is a strap line I've used in the past recently is you can't spell Grail without GR. How much great kicks are being left on the shelves on the on the shelves due to the chase of hype? And are we happy with seeing so much great shoes on shelves? I oh, bought it. Oh, still. Yes, uh, this was yes. one. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. cute. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, shape. Yeah. Um, I think the shape is on point. Um, I think it's a banging colorway. Um, having seen the Sean, Web Sean Weatherspoon's sample colorway surface, yes. um, this was a no-brainer. Coming back in answer to your question, I think that, um, take this for example, a lot of GRs are sitting on the shelf. Um, I think they're being overlooked because hype. Everyone's going off the hype because yeah. they feel like that's what's in and that's what I need to get. But this shoe for me, um, it ticks all the boxes. Would you say that if those shoes were hyped, would that have been an easy cop? I don't think it would have been an easy cop if they were hyped, no, because obviously everybody would have been going after them. But I think that she's a really good example of the question about GRs, which is like, uh, there's a reason why I think, you know, you like that shoe. I mean, the shape. If the shape wasn't the shape, you probably wouldn't have bought it, right? I mean, yeah. And I think that's why. Uh, you know, what we've seen this year is so many amazing Air Max one with the shape you can live with, okay? And there are loads of them sitting because ju it's just been massive, right? There's been so many of them, but I think you picked the, the pick of the bunch, to be honest, because I, I got the same, I think, um, uh, on the GR side. The shape of the Air Max one, I think, has just made that any, pretty much any release, you can pick it up and you can just love it. Yeah. And I think that's obviously been something that's, that's massively missing. Um, Stop in. I, 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 just to say, I think it is hype because and I, I dare anyone to argue with me because if that came out with that on it, <laughs> what would have happened? That's that shape. I mean, that's it, actually a better shape. But if that came out on that, what would have happened? That would have been missing. You would have been yeah. fighting for it. And it yeah. would have been some of our top tens, mm -hmm. top fives, number one pickups of the year. And, and we're all victims of it. I'm actually going to talk about the the Skeptors, isn't it? The Skepta Freeze. So basically, obviously, like he dropped, he dropped the Skepta Freeze and it also dropped with a tracksuit as well, which I'm currently wearing. Um, but at, like literally on the same, on the, I think the same day or a couple days before, um, also dropped the 97 BWs, the black ones and the Persian Violet ones in it with the silver and all that. Me, like I'm looking at it as out, from outfit perspective. So I'm looking how am I gonna rock my shoes with my outfit. Um, and for me personally, I'm not gonna knock the Skepta Freeze, they're, they're all right. But personally, for me, they don't really bang with the tracksuit. The, the 97 BW does. And like when, yeah, exactly. So um, so when people are coming in, um, they because obviously we, we didn't really put like for example in, some, in most stores the SK3 is on the shelves, isn't it? Um, so when they start seeing 97 BWs and then they see the tracksuit, they're like, oh, are these the SK3s? Yeah. And then and then you're kind of forced you're kind of forced to think about it and like for me I work in retail so I'm just like no nah, these aren't the SK3s and they're like oh like why not like why are these not why are these not them and and you're just like well these aren't them in it and, <laughs> and well, well, they, they, it's it's not That's that in it and and it's one of them ones where like because you've now said these aren't the SK3s they leave it on the shelf and they go they're waiting for the SK3s because the name attached to it like everything behind it they want that and not the other thing. Do you think it's going to be a case later on in the future whereby there's so many good GRs that have released this year, everyone's going to go back and pick up GRs and then when somebody sees a GR like that Air Max one there, everyone's, everyone's going to be like, oh fuck, I should have picked that up. Why did, why did I pick this up or why did I pick that up? What's your guys' thoughts? The only way that will happen is if Cam Shoe was marketed more heavily than the Para. And that's, that's, that's what it comes down to. You've got to remember the brands are are feeding on your not only your addiction but your thirst for it everyone's thirsty for, for a, a new shoe um like say the uh, react element yeah. now that is a gr that was a gr yeah. the black one and the sale one right gr shoe very very good shoe in my opinion i think it's just one of the best shoes that's come out in a very long time can't stop wearing it but for a gr that was marketed like a hype shoe like like a collab and people went nuts for it it sold out in regards to time is a massive factor in regards to this now <clears throat> like what we've seen in 
a lot of us know there are a lot of GRs from back in the day that are now very sought after the price is risen on something that's like a JD exclusive like what you've got on your feet please this is a plug to you talk about your shoe and what other brands can we think of that have a GR or something that wasn't highly sought after in the past that now is you see it and it's like oh my gosh I wish I could find that shoe well these took me about five six years to find shout out Mark Watson thank you for those um, it's just something different Nike had their like mayflies and stuff like that then from 2005 and it was just the fact that they made something which was designed purely for running in the summer and wet conditions so they would dry your feet could breathe it's a super lightweight shoe super comfy last while I say that but they're unfortunately starting to come a little bit unglued at the moment but I think it's even now everyone's looking for older Air Max ones that like pre-2008 when that shape was beautiful it's something which is more desirable and harder to find than any of any of the hype stuff now I mean even para like you were saying I've been a massive para fan for a long time and it's just going back to saying like the, the chlorophylls and stuff were easier to find they sat there Para wasn't such a big artist then as well. Now over the last 10, 15 years, he's just in huge galleries doing stuff for larger stuff. So it's it's hard to say with grails and collaborations, which is gonna sell and which isn't. It's all to do with personal taste and, and what's actually gonna well. And now I'm older and I can actually afford more stuff, which I couldn't when I was a kid. Yeah. I can now go back and try and find those things which I really wanted as a kid. And it's, yeah, it's with all the hype that's going on, it's actually easier to cop stuff that you wanted, which is older. It may not last as long, but yeah. it's, it's nostalgia as well, I think. Do you think the brands are bothered or concerned that we're, well, I say we, we all are chasing after hype shoes in the place of GRs that have just been left on the shelf? Do they really care at all? I think one of the perfect people to answer that is Mark over there. Obviously you would have seen how it was back then and now you can see how it is now. So we know that, you know, obviously you've seen it firsthand, how the market has changed. What are your thoughts on the question? It's, it's just different, the way that shoes are marketed now. Um, back when I was at Nike Town with Amelia, you know, Jordans would come in. Uh, you'd get the initial wave of people that were waiting on them, that would come in, buy them, sit, talk with you about them, and then they would sit on the shelf. And often they would, then I end up on the sale rack. So I'll, I'll buy one on release day, beat that, and then pick it up again on the sale rack and, and keep that on ice for later. So yeah, these are like my second pair, the first pair I beat. And these, you know, I just pulled out of the box today. And I've got the receipt in there and it's 42 pound. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like brands nowadays, they're kind of, I don't know, they're kind of, they're kind of realizing that I'm just, I'm going to use this vague term, like old heads, like they're starting to realise, they're starting to realise their worth in the game. Like I'll, I'll use Mark as, as an example, because um, obviously you said you bought, you bought your J's on release date and then you didn't buy another pair straight away. You waited until it hit sales. Normally some brands, some brands don't really care about that anymore. Like they literally want to, they want to get a shoe out, they want to bang it out, they want to get quick buck. Like they want to do it like so they get like the easiest the easiest cash them out as quick as possible they're, they're not really paying attention to like people like mark who are who like buy the shoe and then they wait until like hit sales or something because they they can't afford to wait that long to them they lose they lose out they lose out on the money like lonsdale's like stay consistent at like under 20 pound shoe but yeah. they do so well in europe yeah. because it's not the capital city yeah. mm. so they, they sell like off the charts they're still selling to like the eastern europeans yeah. or like people outside major cities yeah. because it's affordable so yeah. they get they they sell units mm -hmm. as opposed to in nike and in london where it's such a hype to have like a name brand or like such a, la like a label of any sorts even still though you'll have like a jd exclusive or something like that which is still an access point for different people so if you're feeling that you can't get a limited shoe you can still get something which is limited or or, or feeling exclusive for a lower price range that you might be getting with a collaboration or something like that as well most of the brands, whether it's Nike, Adidas, or like any other like streetwear, sports wear brands, um, are making their main money out of uh, you know selling to Flutter, JD, uh, any other like retailers that wholesale. That's like I don't know, like two thirds of the money they're gonna make like over a year. And then it's like obviously the stuff that they're selling through like you know their website or like stores or whatever. I think the whole like GR, like Grail, like conversation, 
it's all it's almost like doesn't really it's not a real conversation because we're talking to different like demographics and different type of consumer yeah. like to go back to to you for example it's like like you know exactly what you want, you know exactly what you're after, like you know the type of shoes that you want, like it's really specific, but like you want in like a thousand like consumer, like there's gonna be like a part of the, you know, like population is gonna go after hype, another part is gonna go after JR because that's what they can afford, and then it's gonna be like most of us that are gonna go like find that specific shoe, the stuff that we like, I just want to get um, Ashley in uh, to his his um, his uh, thoughts on on the subject, just because I know Ashley seems to get a lot of hype, luckily. But also as well, it's not just Nike; he gets a broad range of brands. I think obviously it's important to you know, yeah, Nike uh, they're churning out all of the hype, but I know he'll get bits that, that you'll get the under undercover hype as well. But let's, I just want to hear what Ashley has to say on the. Uh, yeah. Well. I think a part of that is I've just always ventured out and liked other brands. I've never stuck to just Nike. When I was a kid, it was all Nike because that's all everybody liked kind of thing. But as I got older, I noticed that if I'm missing out on a shoe, I actually saw like a Saucony or an Asics. It's actually quite fire. They're actually doing dope collabs as well. So I figured try them out. And since I tried them out, I love them as well. And the good thing about them is not a lot of people, especially in this country anyway, I don't know if other countries is different, but not a lot of people are into them as much. So if there is a hype shoe that is like in the Saucony community is a hype shoe, I can get it easier than other ones. So you actually find like this pair, you can find them on the shelves probably in Offspring right now or any other store to pick them up. But I got them straight away and I was gassed to get them straight away. Some people would probably wait and say like, oh, it's probably gonna be on sale in like four or five months or whatever and wait for it. But I'm not a chancer. <laughs> so I'm gonna go for it as soon as I can. Might be a mug in the end, but if I want it, I'm gonna go for it, I think. Mm, everything we're saying is interesting because um, I've been working with some fashion retail brands for work and what we realize is there are many different segments that brands will try and basically service pretty much what you were saying Laurie um, so what we like what we would fit into we're like the niche right we're the or some of us anyway are the guys who have a particular silhouette that we go for all the time and that's you but you're not really the person they're looking for because when they're talking about okay we don't want to market a shoe they're trying to get as many they want a bigger bucket than that bucket because it's a niche bucket so that's why we now have stuff like fast fashion which is just like how can we produce something that people get and it's gone and that's it you miss it and that's it so when we have the hype that's driving the awareness and the relevance yeah everyone knows Nike but Travis Scott, Drake or whoever else keeps them relevant for where we are right now. And that works for Nike, but then we have other brands, which is like we were saying, um, I'm going to say it wrongly, Sukoni yeah. and Asics, um, where they had their hype and they've died down. But that's pretty good also. Um, I think I said in the last chat, every year, for, every year for Christmas, when my missus asks me, what do I want? I always point to Asics or Sukoni shoes. Because I know there's shoes that came coming out during the year that I couldn't afford to get the Nike shoe that I wanted and that shoe. I'm just like, okay, can you get me that? Because I know it'll be on a sell rack and end or something, yeah. right? So that's how it works. You just have to kind of pick and what for the brands. It's not that they don't care. They need to make their money. They need to be relevant. But at the same time, they need to serve their base. Their actual base is the guy who goes into like the guys who are buying the monarchs and burning them. Those guys. That's their base. <laughs> Believe it or not. That's their base because they're buying cheap shoes or cheaper shoes and they're buying more of it than we are buying, you know, 200 quid shoes or 150 or paying resale for like 300 quid, you know, that sort of thing. So, yeah. And on that note, we're going for a break. Thank you.